electric vehicle sales have just gone pretty crazy in France. And the interesting thing is, there's a very strong trend here. There's cars being sold from Tesla and French automakers, and they're pretty much dominating the market. Everyone else is just sort of bit players on the periphery. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. And thank you for tuning in. Thanks for supporting the channel. Now, right now, I think about 60% of viewers haven't yet subscribed. If you subscribe, that would be awesome. That would support the channel. And that would help us with the algorithms. That would help us to actually get more of our content out there to more people, hopefully to more people who are anti-EV so that they can get angry and gnash their teeth because that's always fun seeing people do that. In September, electric car sales increased 20%. 20%. That's a huge increase in a single month. There's an interesting new car here, the Renault Megane E-Tech, which took first place in sales. And obviously, Renault, French manufacturer, right? The French, they were actually a lot like Japanese. They definitely prefer their own cars. Now, people are not aware of the reality here because in Australia, we don't make our own cars anymore. Well, we probably never really did, but you know, we used to make Holdens, which were General Motors type vehicles and Fords, which are kind of Fords in a way, but we don't anymore. So we're not aware of the actual kind of nationalism that goes on in different countries. Now in Japan, the Japanese are very, 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 very patriotic about their own cars. They mostly subscribe to their own vehicles. In France, historically, the French have been the same. So it's no surprise to see electric manufacturers from France sell EVs in France. It's always going to happen. Now, hopefully this continues because obviously Renault, Peugeot, Citroën, they are, you know, they, their sales figures haven't really done that well over the last few years. And we need manufacturers all around the world to continue to sell EVs. We don't want everyone to go bankrupt. We want these guys to be around still. So hopefully their success continues. Now, new passenger car registrations in France increased by only 5.5% year over year to 141,142. But that's a lot below pre-pandemic levels, says Mark Kane from Inside EVs. The year-to-date result is 1.1 million. That's down 12%. So the market has shrunk significantly. The pie size has gone from here to here to here. I mean, if you look at historically 18, 19, they were good years, 2018, 2019, then there's just shrunk, 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 shrunk. So the pie is getting smaller. And yet we're still seeing this significant increase in electric vehicle sales. This is clearly an indicator of the future in France. I think the people in France, they're well aware of the fact that gasoline powered vehicles are old hat. They're, they're not the new thing, right? So this is the context we're looking at, seeing electric vehicle sales increase and gain more market share in France. Now last month, 35,835 new plug-in electric vehicles were registered in France. And that's an increase of 20% year over year, including 34,100 plug-in cars, which represents 24% of the market versus 21% a year ago. So it's not a huge increase, but we're still looking at about 25% of the market. That's a pretty big percentage. Not only that, passenger all electric cars reached a record level of 22,481. That translates to a record of 16% market share in France. Now, I really think if more EV manufacturers were producing affordable vehicles for people in France, these numbers would be completely different. So they're just waiting for vehicles to come to the market which they can afford or which they have access to actually buy. I mean, clearly it's it's all well and good selling a good product, Hyundai Ioniq 5, for example, but if you can't get them, it's kind of not that relevant. And that's, I've been criticized for saying that on this channel by many of you, but I think it's a fair point. I think realistically, if you market the hell out of a product, like General Motors at the Super Bowl, they marketed the hell out of products, which a lot of people couldn't buy. Like for example, this year, GM is marketing 11 different EVs. Tell me how many of those models you can actually buy. I mean, seriously. Now, the other interesting thing to see in France is light commercial electric vehicles, all electric, actually hit a market share of nearly 6%. That's one of the biggest market shares in the world for commercial vehicles. Plug-in vehicle registrations, EVs, 22,500. That's an increase of 32% year on year, 16% market share. So EV production has increased by 32% versus the same month last year. 
16% market share. I think that's a pretty good number considering France still doesn't have access to a lot of EVs. Passenger plug-in hybrids are down. The same trend is going on everywhere. Down 1.5% for 11,000 sales and 8% market share. Light commercial electric vehicles are up 47%, 5.5% market share. You can see, right, people really want commercial EVs. Really important to profit margins for a business. Light commercial plug-in hybrids are down 31%. Total plug-ins, 35,835, up 20%. So far this year, more than 240,000 new plug-in electric cars are registered in France. Passenger EVs, 140,850. So fully electric vehicles, 141,000, an increase of 32% this year. That means the French EV market's up 32%. That's a good figure. I'm, I'm, I think that's a... That's something that they can be proud of. So well done to you guys in France. I'm sure you'd be selling more, buying more of these if they were available to you guys. So who's winning in this market? Well, you know, if you go to onto these onto these investment websites, these investment newsletters, they'll they'll brainwash you into believing Volkswagen completely dominates the market in countries in Europe, France, for example. Is this really true? No, it's not. This is their rhetoric. That's what they want you to believe. It's like their anti-Tesla rhetoric. They bought into this whole anti-Tesla movement years ago. Some cost bias means they can't give it up. They can't give it up. They can't stop. It's like an addiction for them. It's a drug. However, the best-selling EV, or at least the highest delivered EV, was the McGain E-Tech. That's the brand new Renault electric hot hatch. Not hot hatch, but kind of like a small SUV. Tweet in the skin to the Nissan Aria. Now, I'll put a link in the description below to my video about the Renault Megane E-Tech. I really like it. I love the look of it. In terms of its efficiency, I haven't seen tests yet, but we'll find out very soon. Now, surprisingly for me, was second place, Tesla Model 3. Deliveries were down 22%. So this was a month where obviously Tesla didn't deliver as many EVs as the previous month but they delivered 2,202 Model 3s in France, making it the second best selling EV. Third best was the Dacia Spring, up 4%. That's actually Europe's cheapest electric car right now, 2,170 deliveries. Fourth was the Peugeot 208, up 2%. Then the Renault Twingo, up 152%. That's a big increase. Fiat 500 was next with 1,269 deliveries. That was an increase of 47%. Tesla Model Y, 1,261 deliveries. And then the Renault Zoe, then the Peugeot 2008, followed in 10th place by the Volkswagen ID3, down 16%. So as you can see, the only real manufacturer here, I mean, you've got Fiat and Dacia who delivered a few vehicles. I mean, the only real position here from Volkswagen was the 10th place ID3. So as you know, Volkswagen are selling EVs. So are Stellantis, the Volkswagen group and the Stellantis group. They are selling EVs in Europe, but their dominance is not quite what people claim it is. Now to give you some context, that means that that's an electric vehicle penetration that's nearly four times higher than the United States. So that's a really good result. However, however, the U.S. has, well, 21 new battery gigafactories that will be built or already have been built between 2018 and 2025. That's 21. But those are just the ones that the, mo the average person knows about. You know, Panasonic, SK, Battery America, LG Energy Solutions, General Motors, of course, Samsung, they're just the mainstream ones. There's actually a lot more being built that people don't know about. There's new lithium ion phosphate battery tech and chemistry that was designed by a new American company, which is actually better technology than anyone else has in the entire world. I'll put a link in the description below to that technology. If you haven't seen that video, you need to see it. It's absolutely game changing. I believe that this is just the tip of the iceberg for American battery manufacturers. So therefore, hopefully, by this time next year, the United States can work some way towards catching up to France. They're on track for it. Can they do it? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.